welcome to the News X Sunday Guardian Roundtable. Today we are taking a look at Rahul Gandhi's visit to Cambridge, which has been making a whole lot of news back home. Uh, he's been, of course, addressing a lot of conferences, uh, addressing the diaspora over there. He's a visiting fellow at the Cambridge Judge Business School, and he, where he gave that lecture, learning to listen in the 21st century. Apart from that, he's been making comments about the lack of democracy back home. He's been talking about the Pegasus spying scandal. scandal. He's been talking about how there's no freedom of press, you know, there's no freedom for the opposition, the use of ED, you the, you know, all kinds of allegations that are being made on foreign soil. So that has got the BJP all riled up. His comments vis-a-vis uh, -vis China also um, are being taken with a huge uh, you know, uh, fistful of salt. We have various BJP leaders saying, look, first the foreign agencies attack us, now our own Indians attack us on foreign soil. So, and this is not the first time Rahul Gandhi has done this, and neither is he the first politician to do this. Let's not forget that Narendra Modi also started this when he go went abroad and he talked about all that was wrong in India from the days of Nehru and how he's come to set it right. So all politicians do it. Rahul Gandhi, of course, is doing it more often now since he's in the opposition. So is this a good trend? And is Rahul Gandhi, does it make good political sense to take his case abroad instead of speaking here? These are some of the questions we are going to be raising on our uh, roundtable today. Joining me is a panel of distinguished experts and analysts. I have with me Kaveri Bamzai. She's a former editor of India Today. She's a columnist, author, writer, and um, uh, she's also curates a whole lot of very interesting events. Uh, we have Dilip Cherian. He's an image guru, political analyst, columnist. Uh, PKD Nambiar, he's just written a uh, book on um, uh, branding, saying you too can be a brand, but he's also a political analyst, columnist, very well-known face on Indian television. And Rashid Kirwai, of course, uh, I don't need to introduce Rashid. He's written various books on the Congress and on politicians, uh, Bollywood stars. And of course, he's someone who knows the Congress pretty well also. So Rashid, I'll come to you first. Uh, what is Rahul Gandhi doing in your opinion? And does, is he is you know is the uh, uh, is he being targeted unfairly or is it good strategy? I think uh, what is Rahul Gandhi doing? Rahul Gandhi doesn't know what to do uh, next. In the sense that having yeah. done this Bharat Jodo Yatra quite successfully, he does not have a follow-up plan. And ideally, he should have focused on domestic politics. And all he has gone abroad. And Priya, to my mind, he has said nothing that he had not said during Bharat Jodo Yatra. And this whole thing about speaking on foreign soil and all is, uh, uh, is I don't think, I mean, I think uh, Kaveri can dwell upon it much better than me. But to my, to my mind, it's it's become obsolete because, in, you know, technology i mean after all, all this what are the social media platforms are they domestic or are they like you know abroad or so because the companies are american and we all speak on uh, on it as we speak this your program roundtable it can be seen and heard any part of the world so the technology has taken over all these things about geographical uh, boundaries i think the real problem uh, root cause of it is very simple the BJP has very uh, smartly and particularly Narendra Modi has blurred the fine line between the Indian state and government of India. So whatever you say about government of India, it is seen as an attack or a criticism of a union of India or the Indian state. And I think this is a little uh, problematic. And that is where... And the Congress is unable to defend Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi is like a, you know, he's, he's a, like a speaker and he's not a very gifted speaker. Uh, that That's also true. So his articulation has a problem. He intends to say something and he ends up saying something slightly different. So there are no course correction. He does not have a full-time, you know, media consultant or somebody who can give, uh, you know, a spin to it. So these are the problems. But I think, it, we, you know, India is a very noisy democracy. We love all this thing. And this is something that has a very little substance on the voting behavior or voting pattern. Okay. Kaveri, uh, your take on what Rahul Gandhi has said, and you know, I know, agree with Rashid. You know, we, we are a world without borders. What he says here, everybody all says this, the same thing. But there is a difference. Uh, at least the opposition, uh, the government is making a big deal about being, uh, you know, vocal like, on foreign soil. Frankly, what did he say that uh, was new? Uh, you know, he said India is a union of states which requires negotiation. Some states are as large as to befit a European Union. That is all true. You just have to read the Constitution. But perhaps certain people in the BJP are not aware of how to read the Constitution. So there is nothing unusual in what he is say saying. What actually disappointed me is that uh, you know, uh, uh, I think Rahul Gandhi is unable to make up his mind whether he's a political philosopher or a politician. And there is a big difference between the two. You know, he throws up all these wonderful ideas, the art of listening in the 21st century. It's a wonderful idea, you know, and he talks about uh, learning from the streets. 
and then he goes and says that you know this is the first time that someone has done that and you know the world should t- uh, sit up and take notice i mean what was shaheen bag what was uh, what were the farmers protests they were on the streets right so right. he forgets basic things like this when he talks wherever he talks it doesn't matter uh, i don't think it matters whether he talks in cambridge or in karnataka uh, the point is that uh you know his thoughts are a sort of collection of half baked ideas some of which are wonderful which require great thought and depth uh the art of listening you could talk about uh, you know from ashoka to akbar ashoka listened to his inner voice akbar listened to his experts his own mother listened to her inner voice there's <laughs> so much to talk about when you talk about the art of listening there's so much to talk about the bharat jodo yatra and what he learned from it the only thing that he could talk about was uh you know uh, healing and um, uh, unemployment being the biggest uh, issues i would have loved to listen to what he listened to when he was in the bharat jodo yatra when he was walking and that i think is the failing of all politicians in india or elsewhere perhaps they don't listen you know they don't listen to anyone else if he had listened to the congress party he would not be doing the things he does as jashid bhai said he would have been in the northeast campaigning okay knowing that you're going to lose perhaps but still campaigning being out there with the troops you can't do a one off like a bharat jodo and then say i've done it uh, i've seen the streets now uh, let me go and be um, uh, a political philosopher for a brief while and then I'll come back again and be a politician you need to be a politician 24/7 365 days a week in any country now you're constantly under surveillance as he himself says not just by the state but by the people they're watching you all the time and you say these half big things it's so disappointing after 52 years of existence on earth and almost two decades in public life is this all that you can come up with we don't want to hear his point of view on hmm. the usa and china we want to hear his point of view on india which is a uh, picket you know um, uh, rahul gandhi it's uh, not really where he says but what he says i think uh, is uh, not really up to the mark is what the criticism is oh, well that is true and i think both rashid bhai and kaveri ji has really told the real crisis what uh, as an image of a brand uh, uh, rahul gandhi is going through on the one side he wanted to he don't he's in a in an image uh, building crisis and he's been build, trying to build it multiple times and i i think we can all see that once again he is failing in a very very bad way on the one side he is trying to his approach is now towards quite a, towards the left oriented uh, orientation so mm. people who are uh, walked through uh, along with him or in the company of him like a kanaiya kumar or extreme left or even jogendra yadav or many some people who are left lenient people his outlook from very unlike of a congressman now he is looks like a very left oriented person but there was raguram rajan also i mean to raguram rajan also and so so many other people but he's not left but he's not left yeah yeah, yeah. not not yet left <laughs> yeah so yet left. Is that the other part of it is that we need to it's very interestingly that he also tried to now uh, trying to be a philosopher and intellectual which he is not he may be but he may be like then uh, he is not in a position or he's not having that uh, Uh, capacity to communicate that effectively maybe he whatever he thinks what when he uh, speaks that out it comes out to be something else and his one week of this uh, london yatra or the, the the whole cambridge to ratham uh, many other conferences has been a disaster and most of the time whenever he goes to such kind of a platform rather than doing anything good for himself as a brand rahul or for the congress party he does it the other way around the uh, it, it most of the time the mocking and if you really go through the social media people are mocking the whatsapp every word uh, pumpy somebody is asking about the foreign policy his replies are something like uh, uh, some somewhere else he is going to the social life and uh, self, a country being selfish and so on so forth this does not go well with even the international audience uh, people will judge him by 
that as a rahul gandhi with uh, nehru's great grandson or uh, indira gandhi's grandson and rahul uh, rajiv gandhi's son he had that 20 years of uh, people had given it to him in in, in he is born with a silver the apprenticeship is too long you're saying yeah, now. that's 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 this is now not any more people would like to listen to such kind of um, uh, without having any base allegations let me ask you this okay. and in fact to everybody Last 75 years, India is such a large country. Is there a single time or single government wherein the unemployment was not an issue? Do you think that even in a country like US, which has just only 300 million people or 30 crore people, isn't it an unemployment an issue? Unemployment. You know, I'll just get back to Rahul Gandhi. You, I get your larger point. But the one point that Kaveri had made is that he had that whole Bharat Jodo Yatra experience. Wouldn't that have been a better uh, content wise to talk about? As in with anecdotes, with illustrations as to the India that he saw on the road rather than, you know, this. Uh, all this seems, you know, it's been said before at the end of the day. You know, I certainly think that <clears throat> as a savvy politician, he should have played that part. Hmm. The confusion is, does he want a kind of break from politics and a play? If he had been listening to the India of today, he would have understood. India of today has an enormous quantum of self-confidence, pride and a position in the world kind of uh, space. I think that also a lot of what he said has been inflated beyond its importance. Mm. You know, uh, we we are giving it a huge amount of space and perhaps if that was the objective, he has succeeded. And that certainly has this, this inflation of a tiny elements of some controversy has worked very well. Has he made any new revelation as both, uh, as all three of, our panelists so far have said he has not said something which is blazingly new, blindingly something that was not obvious to everybody who looks at India or is from India. Does he need to do that? He does. The problem that Rahul Gandhi and several other politicians are facing at the moment is that they are dealing with a 24 by 7 by 365 prime minister who would actually take and nip those words out of their buds and own it himself. Mm. That is what terrorizes the leadership today. They don't want to say something which Narendra Modi will turn on and say, it's already done or wait for next week, it'll be done by then. That is the real fear. So everybody is playing with their cards close to the chest. And it's a good time to analyze that, but that is the real game in town. Uh, Rashid, you know, all this publicity also is not harming him. At least, you know, it is negative. <coughs> of it is could also be the BJP troll army, but at least it's getting Rahul the attention which he media doesn't normally give him. If people, you know, uh, Dilip knows how these headlines are managed. So, you know, he's got a point over there by saying at least the focus is coming on that also. Yeah, but I think that a lot of uh, negativity is there. Some of the things that, as you know, Kaveri was pointing out, Rahul Gandhi is, you know, starts with saying something and then he goes off the, you know, tangent. So even the loyalists do not get that kind of import of it. And that is when I think he needs, you know, a spin doctor. See, you look at Barack Obama, extremely gifted and talented. Clinton, you can go on mentioning, you know, all those world leaders. They have a huge team working, you know, 24-7 with them. And the, whatever is just out is very well, you know, curated. In Rahul Gandhi's thing, it's very really abstract. I mean, Rahul Gandhi says that the Western democracies need to help us. How is he talking about the ideas and the ideals that, you know, Thomas Jefferson and Harold Lasky and, uh, you know, uh, George Washington, all of them. But it looked as if he's seeking some kind of, I mean, the BJP gave a spin that, you know, that, you know, he wants, you know, Western European countries and America to, you know, militarily intervene in India to restore democracy. That was not his idea. So I can go on saying that his biggest problem is how to, you know, you need to have a messaging should be sharp and crisp. That is not there. So when perhaps, I mean, I, I can just go on, you know, justifying in a way or analyzing it when he talks about that, when he, perhaps in Kashmir, when he says that he met terrorists, he, he may have met separatists, he may have met people, uh, you know, who, who don't have that kind of same degree of faith in the Indian Union as some other citizens have. Instead of that, he said, oh, I met, you know, terrorists. No, you, you know, terrorists have a very different 
politics right. and somebody you know ak47 came to him and you know said okay rahul gandhi you are doing you know mohabbat ka paigham and all i'm leaving you out so this is a real problem and there is no impact analysis so every political party has to know that where it's going you know who are you targeting at so then i'm saying this kind of institutional mechanisms are missing and that's where rahul gandhi's and uh, the scores or whatever he's trying to say looks very hollow jaded and at some times uh, very kind of uh, you know he's just putting it on something it's not natural him i mean we know he's not he's not nehru we know he's not indira gandhi of course uh, indira gandhi was that not nehru nehru was not uh, someone else so he should be talking look at narendra modi in contrast you see he is also intellectually not a perhaps not a very you know gifted person but he comes across as a very practical person so you don't need to intricate terms i mean you know if you're not sunil gavaskar or kapil dev you can always be ravi shastri smart he's not being smart good points if i before we go in for a break one quick question for rashid is something which i am also perplexed with this whole rahul gandhi's sudden rediscovery of kashmir is my home i don't know whether he said it in cambridge but why is he suddenly reiterating kashmir is my home kashmir everywhere he goes forward forward is like that yeah actually that's the thing so he just likes something he's like a person who gets some kind of you know twine and and he wants to flaunt it so i mean i may go to kashmir and i like you know kashmir a lot and suddenly i realize that you know kashmir is a special place but then i you know i go as a tourist so he is a is a serious politician and he should say it so i think it's also got to do on a very more serious note a priya there is a constant struggle that goes on in the congress party to kind of own uh, rahul gandhi there is a fold i think uh, 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 dilip ji would know would remember this there was known as you know chicago forum the people with uh, you know who are still very active janam ramesh uh, uh, sam pitroda uh, rajiv desai that all those people who came and in the time of rajiv gandhi they had tried to control uh, rajiv gandhi and there was a lot of resistance in the congress so i say the same chicago gang or chicago forum is back in action so they have no connect with the you know stark political realities of today and they think that they are very gifted having lived in uh, you know in america and they understand democracy and politics so they try to import that and that's where rahul gandhi becomes looks like a very clumsy figure now first he had all those laptop toting boys with the excel sheets in his office now he's got this uh, version of chicago gang because the uh, why raise the kashmir issues because he's just walking into the bjp's narrative saying now kashmir is so safe after 370 ke even rahul gandhi is saying now is owning it but i'm going to take a break and come back and continue this discussion so stay with us वाह भाटिया जी 16.5 परसेंट के रेट पर लोन मिल रहा है डन कर दीजिए आओ बेबी ये क्या तरीका है मसाज देने का बेबी ये क्या तरीका है लोन लेने का बेस्ट इंटरेस्ट रेट पे लोन लेने के लिए पैसा बाजार डॉट कॉम पे जाइए पैसा बाजार डॉट कॉम लोन लेने का सही तरीका Hello and welcome back to the round table. We are taking a look at Rahul Gandhi's Cambridge visit and, of course, uh, the morning after and what all has been happening ever since. Uh, Kaveri, the, you know, the, you, I like what you said about the Bharat Jodo Yatra. He did not use that. All that Rahul Gandhi didn't do in Cambridge actually is what we should be discussing also. Just to address your point about Kashmir, uh, uh, Kaveri, about from there. Yo, he is, is one. He is one fourth Kashmiri, so I will grant him that. Uh, rediscovering even one fourth your, of your identity is not a bad thing, and um, uh, you know this is not the first time he's gone to Kashmir as well. If you remember, uh, he had gone with a whole load of corporate leaders and made a lot of promises. Oh, which unfortunately, uh, you know, were not uh, uh, he didn't see through uh, with, as it is with a lot of other things. But I think there's an interesting point that um, I think Rashid Pai made was that this whole idea that. um uh here is someone who is able to articulate not very well but articulate some points of dissent that some people are feeling a lot of people are feeling he hmm. touches them at various points you know he'll talk about healing or he'll talk about unemployment or he'll talk about the idea of india these are not ideas that normally get talked about in the noisy sort of electoral driven politics that we have so these ideas at least i'm happy to see 
get the kind of play in the media that otherwise wouldn't. So mm-hmm. I think that is a kind of public service, I suppose, which he, um, whether he likes it or not, is doing. You know, some amount of dissent, which otherwise is completely erased from our public discourse, at least from a, a 24-7 media, gets articulated. So in that sense, I think, he should continue to do what he does. He should just do it in a more thoughtful, in a more practiced and in a more nuanced manner. You know, these are very, very difficult and very, uh, you know, nuanced ideas to present to the public uh, and to present to the voting uh, uh, public. So he has to do it very thoughtfully and he has to keep reiterating them. You know, he can't suddenly one day talk about uh, uh, the the kind of uh, uh, tra- traumatized people he met on Bharat Joro Yatra. And then when he goes to uh, Cambridge, he forgets about them, which, mm. uh, you know, makes the BJP believe that, OK, everything was hunky-dory. There was no... Uh, what was he going to heal? You know, there were no divisions that he saw. So what was he going to heal? You know, I mean, he should have talked about those divisions, those polarizations, those uh, tensions that he talks about in India. He should have, uh, you know, articulated some of them there. So I think it's a question of practice. And if he wants to play political philosopher also uh, uh, on occasion, he should do it in a more measured and in a more practiced way. Because at least we get to talk about these issues. Otherwise, Priya, where do we get to talk about the art of listening in the 21st century in um, uh, a news channel? Tell me, you know, it's usually about voting percentages and, you know, who said what about whom. So these are not nice and good ideas, at least it raises our public discourse a little. Okay, let's give Rahul Gandhi that, PKD. Or oh, you're not ready to give him that. At least he's raising he's, it. He's like the female, the male Parundati Roy in a way, if you want. Oh no, <laughs> you just damned him in one go. <laughs> Come on, just look at the way we all are, when we are talking about Rahul Gandhi, we are all laughing. That alone says that what is the kind of seriousness the way we look at him. But PKD, that's because we know he can't come after us with any instrument of state. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> that's the only difference. <laughs> well, that's but, but, but accepting that, let me tell you, this is the irony. The problem is that the politics of today, like every political leader today, irrespective of a political party, there is there is a definitely a challenge every politician today faces because whatever you speak today right now maybe after an hour he you cannot repeat that but then there are common issues which we need to talk about uh, whether it is an unemployment inflation with the standard uh, the bijli sadak pani which was once upon a time a political discourse is not anymore uh, that prominent. So what I, I think the time... That prominent forward, because a lot of it is not being allowed to be raised also, which is where Rahul Gandhi perhaps is going there. He's not, uh, Kaveri does have a point in that. Okay, let me ask you this. That we are four, 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 of, four of your guests and including you. Have you told any of us not to speak anything bad against Narendra Modi? Have you I'm not, not going to, you. Going to censor it? <laughs> so I think this this, this, this narrative of uh, censoring uh, is actually not there, at least to an extent, because we also feel, I, I can also tell you one thing, that many regional medias are more powerful than the so-called national media. So the regional medias, for an example, in a Kerala like where me and the Dilip belongs to, they are absolutely anti-Modi media. So as in Karnataka, there are some channels which only... But look what happened in West Bengal. Somebody spoke against Mamta, they had action taken against them. So, yeah, so every... Correct. correct. This, so precisely. So, so bottom line is that Rahul Gandhi's hit and run formula is not working anymore. For an example, he was talking about Pegasus. His phone was having Pegasus. There was a Supreme Court monitoring, monitored committee, Supreme Court appointed. There was a committee... Uh, examined, they, they given a full uh, half page advertisement in the all the mainline newspapers, come and deposit your phone. If you feel that your mobile phone was uh, as having uh, Pegasus or for that matter, anything else. Why none of these people has uh, not even able to do? So Rafael in the same case was in the same, he was going all around and telling that uh, Rafael, Rafael, there was a big corruption happened. What happened? The Supreme Court again quashed that and said that this all happened is all right. So one, on the one side that if you are, I think the time has come. I think I will sum it up like this way. Since we are talking about his articulation and communication issue, the time has come for him to stop doing the one-on-one communication or interview 
interviews or press conference he should stop attending knowing his limitations as an individual not as a politician per se secondly i think there are technology now available teleprompters so if he is talking about an unemployment he should be able to come up with the proper data so that is the way you will uh, change your community okay. so you are saying his speech was not uh, you know the content Absolutely. Was touched. So, okay the broad, broader problem is that there are four states going to be on election this year hmm. rahul gandhi is supposed to be if if i was rahul gandhi i would have been in karnataka for a week the next one week i would have been in uh, madhya pradesh then in uh, chatisgarh and right. 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 and all these places two places the government uh, is right now if, if they lose chatisgarh and rajasthan then the congress mukt bharat is going to be a reality and if the let's, other say, let's just come back to the the uh, current point i get what you're saying that rahul gandhi is you know sort of going to cambridge he should be focusing on matters at home absolutely and, and most importantly even whatever little little he has gained during the 4000 kilometers yatra i think every time he opens his mouth in anywhere any word he is losing those whatever he has gained but is he, the, is he losing it so fast and also you know what pkd said is that you know okay whatever it is rafael and all may be struck down by the court but at least these are issues that should be raised as an opposition you can raise them the court can find like even 3g or 2g or whatever 2g it was raised later on struck down but these are political issues and every political party should raise them but any issue should be raised i mean it can be struck down it can be given a clean chit but at least if there is a debate going on as an opposition member you should raise it right the i think that raising it is no problem the problem is that you've got to be consistent about it and you've got to know what to say correct and even more fundamentally you've got to ensure that you craft your message correctly in these days you can't have you know of of cricket or of communications you cannot have a loose ball you know the loose ball comes back to hit you the problem is that that you've got to craft your message with or without the teleprompter that ekd suggested he should be consistent in his messaging know how to use social media to make some of these points in an articulate manner if he has a a, a demonstrated ability to sometimes muddle his metaphors the thing is that here is a man who should actually listen to his handlers whether the handlers are from the left from chicago or from amritsar i am not concerned he needs a bunch of clever handlers who keep him on message and he needs to be able to work within the confines of that all great leaders have done that unless they are themselves enormously gifted in communications which so far in recent times narendra modi hasn't been excelled at so uh, i think that that's a constraint he need to recognize and if he works with that he can be hugely successful raising issues which deserve to be raised which has been heard on the street and needs to be kept in the public uh, visibility during election time if he combines all these three things he will actually have the beginnings of a success formula beginning of a success i mean we are way past the beginning stage but yeah dilip i mean i like the way dilip summed it up the message has to be crisper and more uh, clear and coherent uh, i think the report card rashid in the end would be rahul gandhi good on intent but bad on uh, low on content and needs practice <laughs> would that be a good summary i think again uh, uh, priya to sum up it's actually rahul gandhi is not hungry or really overly anxious about you know his success he thinks that you know hum to jaise hain waise hi rahenge so this kind of thing is something very problematic uh, for the congress party and i agree with while i agree with whatever kaveri says i have a major disagreement with her and with you also priya with due respect that you know he's trying to convert the already the converted i mean he's just quoting you know the liberals or the you know uh, people who are who got westernized or western education etc he should be reaching out to the you know people who have been you know taken in by mr narendra modi's you know narrative of muscular nationalism etc because the congress has very strong credentials to counter it and that's where my problem with rahul gandhi so rahul gandhi needs to get real get serious and you know the hard work there is no doubt of it i give full marks to him he is working much harder than any politician i know but you know it should be success oriented 
So he should, uh, you know, Cambridge, he should head to Nagpur or something. <laughs> so what, what, whatever it is, Priya, I think the, you know, when he talks about the democracy of the streets and how other democratic institutions are now not as accessible to politicians as they once were, therefore they have to go to the street. He should also understand the legacy of the streets, you know. So when he talks about the streets, he should also uh, 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 put in his protest, his Bharat Jodo Yatra, in the context of what has happened before. The other protests that have happened before, whether it's on campuses, whether it's in Shaheen Bagh, whether it's in uh, the farmers' protest, he should align with all these forces instead of wanting to be uh, this leader in this uh, island, which I think only is visible to him. He has to be the connecting force, and that is the problem with the Congress as it is currently as well. Instead of wanting to go uh, go it alone, they mm. have to, uh, you know, create a network of other opposition parties and be one of them rather than this idea that it's first among equals because it's the only national party. He also has to understand that he's not first among equals. He is one of the many on the street who are articulating. Um, a very felt uh, resentment, a very felt anger and a very felt rage against uh, the establishment. And he has to do it all the time. All the time. He cannot take a vacation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think there's a very strong message coming over here. Do not take any more holidays. But, to, you know, there is a whole new show that we could do uh, after this, you know, is the Congress first among equals or not? Because it is the only pan-national uh, party in the opposition camp. But that's a conversation I'm going to call you all back for. But thank you for now and thank you for this conversation. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.